one of my instructors was a marine test pilot. We talked about what that was like, how challenging it was, uh, not glamorous at all, and I decided that's what I wanted to do. So for my first six, seven years in the Marine Corps as an aviator, I, I kept applying to test pilot school until I got in. And I finally got there and became a test pilot. And while serving as a test pilot, I met the late, great Dr. Ron McNair, who was, we lost on the Challenger crew. Uh, but Ron had been selected in the very first group of shuttle astronauts. Uh, he came up with a bunch of the test pilot school alums, and, uh, and we met for the first time. We had grown up about 42 miles from each other in South Carolina. Like me, Ron was African American. The only difference was I had never dreamed of going to space. That's all Ron had ever dreamed of doing. Um, he had graduated from North Carolina A&T with honors and went to MIT and earned a PhD in laser physics and then was selected in the first group of shuttle astronauts. And before he left that weekend, he said, okay, uh, are you going to apply for the shuttle program? I said, not on your life. And he said, why not? I said, they'd never pick me. And he looked at me as I'm looking at you. He said, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. He said, how do you know they won't pick you if you don't, if you don't apply? And I got embarrassed because... Growing up in the segregated South, my mom and dad were school teachers, and they had told me all my life, every single day, you can do anything you want to do. You know, you, you hold your fate, you just, but you got to do it. You got to study hard, got to work hard, and, and you just can't worry about failing. So I got embarrassed, and I sat down, and I did my application, and that's how I came into the space program. So 